the first speaker is Dong Sheng Li from Imperial College, London. The title is there as Impective Blenders Near Whispered Torai with Omokini. Please. Uh, Okay. Uh, hello, I'm very happy to have a chance to talk here. And today I'm going to talk about blenders. So first, what are blenders? Uh, this notion was first introduced by Bonatti and Diaz uh, in 1996, uh, where they used blenders to construct, it, uh, to construct an example of a robust, now hyperbolic tube. And uh, it, roughly speaking, a blender is just a hyperbolic set, but with a wonderful property that's a non transverse intersection with the stable set or the unstable set with this blender is robust, which means that the non transverse intersection cannot be removed by an arbitrary small operation. And there are many results uh, followed based on the use of blenders, which I'm not going to talk about. But uh, later, Nasili and Pujols. Uh, they consider blenders in symplectic cycle, and they also uh, constructed an example of robust transitivity, but for Hamiltonian dynamics. So today I'm going to talk about symplectic blenders, and uh, I'll show that we can find such objects in a more general uh, setting. And it's a joint work with the map trial. Uh, before I introduce my our main results, I all, all the precise, precise definition blenders. I want to give an application of our results. Oh, it's about the saddle center pure of the orbit uh, with home clinics. So we will take any F uh, symplectic diffusion morphism uh, from a, a two n dimensional manifold. And S uh, can be one uh, to infinity or real or negative. And we, we assume that uh, this map has a pure of the orbit. So take a, a point, the other point O, and we call it a saddle center if it has exactly two multipliers on the unit circle. And uh, of course, it, it cannot be one or minus one. Uh, so because of this assumption, we have a, near O, we have a two-dimensional center manifold. It's um, uh, normally have hyperbolic. So uh, for each point on this uh, WC, we have a strong stable leaf and also strong and stable leaf. And when this uh, S is greater, then or equal to three, we have KM curves near, or just uh, have the bear curve theorem. We have KM curves near this point O, just like uh, in this picture. And because uh, we have the, the foliation, foliations, we have leaves, uh, each KM curve, it has a stable manifold and unstable manifold, consists of those uh, strong stable leaves and strong stable leaves. And uh, we'll assume that. Uh, uh, particularly, O, the, the point, the cell center O, it has stable manifold and unstable manifold, right, which, uh, which are just leaves from the uh, foliation. And we assume that uh, the invariant manifolds of O, they intersect the stable manifold and unstable manifold. They are both two uh, n minus one dimensional, right? But the whole dimension is two n. So uh, apparently the intersection is non transverse, right? And we know that by symplecticity, if we do small symplectic perturbation, the point O, it, it persists. It's, it's still a saddle center. But uh, what about this? What can, what can we say about this from clinic? But right. this is non-transverse, very non-transverse. Uh, by our results, we can prove this. We can show that if uh, at, at the beginning, we have this non-transverse home clinic, then we can find uh, arbitrary to uh, arbitrary close to F in the space of all some black dynamics, uh, some black maps. There is an open region, and it contains a dense subset. And for each system from this dense subset, the continuation of O still has a, a home clinic, which means that this non transverse home clinic is in some sense persistent. And uh, this setting of saddle center, there is some example in celestial mechanics. I just want to sh uh, show it. So we consider a planar circular restricted through body par problem. Uh, for example, uh, Jupiter and Sun, right? And it uh, is a Hamiltonian dynamic uh, system with two degrees freedom. So it's four dimensional 
thing, and uh, we know that's the Lagrange point. Sorry. No, it's it's saddle center. It, it's it's always saddle center uh, because uh, we do uh, some lexical perturbations. The two two multipliers on the unit circle it cannot move out. Um, it, first, it's a it's a periodic point, and it does not have uh, have uh, one as the multiplier. So it's all always have. So, so yeah, it's okay. Uh, but okay, uh, and continue. So we know that's the uh, Lagrange point L two. It's a saddle center, but it's an equilibrium. But it's uh, for flow. It's not what it wants. And but we also know that L two has some clinic orbits by uh, old results by Libri. Uh, Martinez and Simo. Uh, but uh, we want to map, right? Here is the flow. So we consider the elliptic problem. Uh, for this problem, it's Hamptonian, it's just a uh, time periodic perturbation of the plan, uh, circular one. So we have here two and a half degrees of freedom. Right? And then uh, if we consider the period map, the equilibrium L2 becomes a fixed point over the period map. And it's now in saddle center period orbit over the map. And we, we believe that we can also recover the contain orbits so it's uh, still uh, ongoing, ongoing. Then we can uh, then we can apply our theorem one to this containing. This is uh, an example. Okay, now I, I just want to sketch the proof of theorem one. Okay. Uh, it actually follows from parametric world. Which were considered a generic setting, a generic, uh, which means that you need, oh, okay, I'll come back to this, this, set, this con generic condition later. So it's generic. And the proof, the first step is just to create a simple blender, right? Where it's, it's just one sentence, but this sentence is our main results actually. We create some simple blender near any, near some KM curve, as I showed before, right? Near this, oh, we have a lot of KM curves, equipment on it. We, we take one. And we do some small perturbation. We get a simplex blender near this KM curve. And next, we just put uh, the unstable manifold OO and stable manifold O to this blender, which means that we get, uh, we, we make WO intersect the stable manifold of the, um, uh, the blender and then WSO intersect the unstable manifold of the blender. This is the first step. We do this, uh, say we add some prime value, epsilon equal to epsilon star, we, we have this. Picture okay, we have this intersection, and for a uh, blender, uh, I still I don't want to give a uh, definition blender, but you just need to know it is hyperbolic basic set, and it has this the tangent bundle has this structure, partial hyperbolic, it has n, n minus one dimensional strong stable and strong unstable bundles, and uh, uh, dimensional one uh, center bundles, center stable and center stable. Okay, and we have invariant cone field uh, along the strong stable direction. And we also know that the because the stable manifold and the stable manifold O are just leaves of the collision, so it they must turn into the cone field. Okay, this is what we know. At this point, we have the uh, intersection between the manifold, and we use the property of lambda being a being a simplex blender. It means that the non-transverse intersection between the uh, invariant manifolds of O and the blender they are robust, which means that Near this parameter value epsilon star, we have actually have a neighborhood of this value. For all the parameter values in this neighborhood, we have this non transverse intersection. Okay, this is uh, what we have now. And then we do something more because lambda is basic sets. We know that uh, the periodic points are dense inside, and the uh, their unit manifolds are accumulating on the unit sets of the, the set lambda. So we can Find a dense subset U prime uh, in the parameter value space, right? Uh, for each, uh, each such parameter value, we have a set of P in the blender, such that the stable manifold, uh, the invariant manifold of P intersect uh, the invariant manifold of O. So we can have this picture. So here we, I just uh, 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 consider near near the point P, throughout the point P, okay? So we have like the, the coordinates, just X and Y are strong coordinates, and U and V are just uh, 
center stable and center and stable coordinates. So the stable manifold of P is it's given by uh, in picture for now we consider simply for the four dimensional case. Okay. So the stable manifold of P is just a just a axis, X U axis. And a stable manifold of P in this picture is two dimensional. It is a plan, UV plan. So we know that the uh, and the manifold O is a strong, strong and stable leaf. So it's in this picture, it's like this. It's, it must be a function uh, of Y, right? Along the Y direction, along the strong and stable direction is W O. And W S O, it must uh, along the strong stable direction. But here you see, we, I just take X U together so I cannot draw the picture, but we know that we have this intersection, right? We have the, uh, this intersection, so, uh, we, we know we, at least we can draw a point here. This point uh, is the intersection between WSO and WP. Okay. And now uh, we, we can perturb. We just move this. We have parameter values. We change the parameter values and we move the, we first we move the unstable manifold of, of O. We move it along the uh, weak, state, weak and stable direction. So it, uh, when we move it, it treats out. It treated out a surface here, right? And for the stable manifold, or we move it along the uh, center stable direction. So it must treat out a, a, also a surface, which which uh, is a, a graph of function of x and u, right? So now I control it treats the surface. The surface in this picture it must be a curve like this, right? Okay. Apparently, the must intersection, right? The must intersect, right? This surface. In orange and the purple curve per se intersect at some point. At that point, we just have the, in the home clinic intersection between WO and WSO. And because we can consider the uh, iterates of the, ma the manifold of O, right? If we consider, consider forward iterate, we can put the point close to P. And we consider backward iterate, we put this manifold, it goes here. But it must close here. So the size of the perturbation can be actually small. All right. So uh, it's, we can just find another dense subset in U, uh, where each parameter value gives us the intersection of the uh, unit manifolds of the self center O. This is how we get the persistence of the home clinics to the cell center. And U is just the open region in the statement of theorem one. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, this is an application of, of the main theorem, uh, where it's here is in right. We actually uh, the hard part is to find this. Some like blender. If, once you have this, uh, I think it will become simpler. Now I'm going going to talk about this. Okay. So first, I need to give a precise definition of blender. Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I also want to mention that uh, theorem one also uh, works in Hamiltonian dynamics because the proof is just based on uh, the analysis of two local map, uh, uh, locally defined map. One is uh, just uh, res the restriction of f to a small neighborhood over the point O, and the other one is transition map, just can be defined along the uh, home clinics. Uh, I'll just I'll do it, uh, put it later in picture. So uh, is this means that when we consider a dynamical system, uh, consider a Hamiltonian system, when we take its cross section, we do not require a global section. A local section is enough. So here we just take uh, any Hamiltonian uh, system. Uh, it's on a manifold of two n plus one, and we take period of uh, we assume that it has a period of orbit, and it's less in some two n plus one dimensional energy level, right? And then we take a, a local cross section. To this pure out orbit, and then we, the Pankra map has a fixed point, which is Sadison. And then we can just show that the home clinic to this orbit uh, is persistent by our theorem. Okay, this is just application, uh, not, uh, generalization for the Hamiltonian dynamics. Now I, I want to give you some definition of blenders. Okay, so uh, before uh, give a precise definition, I want to just see some uh, 
uh, words which put the uh, description of its feature. So I, I took uh, the sentence from the book, the Bonatia de Vienna, I think it's very appropriate to call the book, it's called Vienna Uniform Herbolicity. So uh, before I mentioned that uh, the blender has property that the non-transfer intersection with is stable or stable site is robust. Why? The reason is this because the projection, the convenient projection of a stable or stable site has a larger uh, topological dimension than itself. Uh, what it means by convenient, it means that you just project along some strong steep direction or strong stable direction, so it's very convenient. And below is a, it's a, some picture we put to, to illustrate the feature, but uh, you know, it's not Blender, because Blender is, it requires at, at least uh, three dimension. So here, here you just uh, take, a, take a map F, it maps the two uh, small square, uh, rectangles to the big square, okay? So you consider the pre-image actually. So uh, uh, each time you iterate backwards, you get a smaller cube here, here. And you consider set omega, which is the, uh, uh, the union of uh, uh, all the squares here. And it has property that you see uh, each time they all, always cover the center, but right? cover the center by two uh, pre images. So if you project down along this, this line, project uh, near the center, it's, uh, the projection contains an interval. It contains an interval here, which means that you take any curve here, it must intersect this interval. So it must set. Must, must intersect the set omega. So, but uh, the, the dimension of omega is zero, right? but dimension of L is one, the whole dimension is two, the non transverse intersection, but it's robust. This is a uh, uh, new feature of Blender. So now I, I will give a more precise definition. Okay, so we consider some diffeomorphism. It uh, takes uh, it's defined on some open set and a manifold, and we assume that it contains a hyperbolic set lambda. Okay, but we assume more. Uh, but these two properties are important because it must be locally maxim uh, locally maximal. So we know where it renders is. Okay, so and also it has a partially uh, uh, it, it has a partial hyperbolic structure. We have this relation with bundle. We have strong bundle and the uh, center bundle. And we see that this set lambda is a center stable blender. If this center stable bundle, of course, is uh, non trivial. And also, we have two, we have two, uh, uh, one open set, C1 uh, open set for embeddings and a subset of P prime of it. And it contains a uh, DSS dimensional uh, embeddings or DS, DSS dimensional disk to you. So it's a dimension disk is, is strong, stable dimension here. And what we require, require that uh, every embedded disk is tangent to the strong stable core here. And, uh, and the, every pre image of, of an embedded disk, it contains an embedded disk from the smaller set, P prime. And we also require that the two sets. The, the uh, uh, distance, the one distance between two sets D prime and D is finite. And you can see uh, the second uh, uh, requirement here, it means that uh, this every disk D, it contains a point whose uh, backward iterate always lie in the uh, set U, right? But uh, because lambda is a locally maximal set inside U, it means that this point must belong, must belong to the unstable, unstable manifold of uh, lambda. So uh, this requirement is just equivalent to this. It's not equal, it implies this, it implies this. Every disk D contains a point uh, in as the manifold of lambda. This gives, uh, gives us the non transverse intersection. The DSS dimensional disk intersect the DU dimensional uh, as the manifold of lambda. And uh, 
there are the uh, requirements. It implies what? It, impl it implies that this intersection is robust and the perturbation. We call the finite distance. And uh, uh, similarly, a CU blender, a CU blender, you just assume that uh, this center, uh, unstable, center unstable bundle is now empty. And it's a CS blender for the inverse map, then it is CU blender. Okay, uh, these are definitions for blenders, CU blenders and CS blenders. Now, what, uh, what about? Uh, the simplex setting. So we have the so called double blender. It's for the introduced by Nasidin Uh We see that the blender, if, if both the center stable bundle and center unstable bundle is non true, it's not empty, then we can have a double blender, which means that it is simultaneously a CS blender and a CO blender. So, which means that we can uh, have a robust intersection with its stable and unstable manifold. Uh, and at the same time. And uh, when the map is symplectic, we know that the dimension, the strong, stable, strong, strong dimension and the weak dimension are the same. So uh, in this case, we call double blender symplectic blender. And in, their, in their paper, they uh, constructed, uh, I think it, well, this is, should be wrong, I think that's one, only one way, it's more general. Uh, they show that symplectic blenders can be, can be obtained from perturbation over the product structure, where, where uh, one map is integrable and twist, and the other one uh, has a uh, hyperbolic bit extent. It's their uh, uh, construction. And uh, we observed that in their construction, they actually they have a uh, musical torah in this construction, but because the product structure, uh, Each torus it has stable manifold and, and unstable manifold, and they actually uh, each one has a homotopy tendency, and the homotopy it actually uh, it degenerates, uh, it degenerates infinite map, uh, its, it's order is uh, infinite, and uh, we also that's actually a cubic tendency is enough to get the blend. Okay, so. Uh, now I'll introduce what is precisely what is the key uh, is the uh, which uh, torus. Okay. So this definition we consider let's the map has uh, have an invariant curve, which is mocked to S1, the purple. And we see that it's a one-dimensional vertical tori, a torus, if we have is it part basically we assume that it is partially hyperbolic, right? So the tangent bundle uh, on this uh, curve, it's uh, this like this. We have stable and stable and the center. And uh, we have this condition just give us, uh, means that we have uh, near this, uh, this curve gamma, we have a two dimensional uh, center manifold, right? Which is normally hyperbolic by this, this condition. Which actually means this, or to give you a picture. We have a, a neighborhood which is if you move it to Ceylon, it contains gamma, and it's locally uh, it's locally invariant and uh, normally hyperbolic, and it's uh, it's an DCM. Uh, this is two dimensional, uh, but this cylinder has uh, n plus one dimensional stable and unstable manifold. Uh, each one is foliated by. Uh, a minus one dimensional leaves. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And the uh, uh, inside stable manifold and anti manifold A, we have a foliation, strong stable and strong stable. They are CM minus one. And because, because of the leaves, uh, gamma, uh, this gamma, it has a stable and a stable manifold, which is just uh, the union of the leaves, like this. So here, uh, for this, it should be at least four dimensional. So I just use the space above this cylinder to uh, assume it's a stable, and below the cylinder, I assume that it's a stable manifold, OA. 
So uh, this is a picture from gamma has stable manifold. And also A, we have strong stable leaves, strong stable leaves. And also we assume that uh, this gamma is a KM curve uh, of the restriction of F to the cylinder. By KM, I just was uh, in the normal way. Uh, actually, we can introduce coordinates uh, on the cylinder. That's just like gamma is just uh, the size are equal to zero. And it has uh, on zero is a rotation number of gamma, so it's two fun type. And also, we think that uh, this satisfies the twist condition. So now we have a one dimensional uh, whisk toroid, which is also a KM curve. And we have the flowing redox, uh, it's not precise, but this, uh, roughly speaking, we have those two redox. We let uh, gamma have an orbit of home gain tendency. And I assume that if this tendency is partial hyperbolic, I'll show you what it means later. So if this tendency is partial hyperbolic and cubic, then we have a set blender or CU blender without probation, that's near the KM curve. And if it's quadratic, uh, present probation, uh, we can get some type blender. But you see, it's, it's, uh, it seems weird because here, cubic part, here is quadratic. But, uh, uh, we'll, we'll prove this the second result. We just uh, we'll call, we just create a cubic tendency first, and we'll, then we apply the first result twice. Uh, so this is a main result. It has some uh, for other other settings, other cases. It's simple. Like if, if you have the higher order tendency, just to some equation, you, you can get always get a quadratic one. But and if you have a transverse intersection, it's also easy. And this in uh, uh, we, we can find uh, so most perturbation, which give us the, the quadratic tendency. So this reduced to this, this reduced to this, but uh, as I said, it's on smooth, what we, what we, what we have done now. Uh, for the real net case, we are still working on it. So, uh, these two are the main results, and, and now I'll state them precisely. Uh, so now it, it, it's what we call partially hyperbolic. It means that, we, if gamma is just the orbit of the tendency, is homogeneous orbit, and we take any points from this, uh, this orbit, we know that uh, this point belongs to us. Uh, there is a stable man, a stable leaf and a stable leaf through this point M, and we assume this condition. This condition basically means that uh, the strong stable leaf is a transverse to the unstable manifold of the cylinder A. And the strong and stable leaf is transverse to a stable cylinder, uh, the stable manifold of the cylinder. Okay. So, because this transversality, we know that it happens at the point M, but because it's, it's transversality, it happens for a small neighborhood. So, we can get a two dimensional disk inside, uh, inside this, this intersection such that uh, both the both the foliations uh, are transverse to this disk. And then we can define the projection, which are holonomies. From the disk to the cylinder through the strong stable uh, foliation and through the strong stable foliation. Then this will define a scatter map, so called scatter map. Well, uh, you'll see a picture soon. So I'll, here I just want to mention that uh, from, from definition, you can see that uh, here is gamma is, is orbital tendency. The image of, 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 of gamma is mass tangent to gamma. As, as a point projection and so it's like this picture right we take small piece here and uh, for each point of this piece we have a strong and stable leaf so we go here we go to the intersection which is two-dimensional once we intersect the uh, sigma and now we consider this uh, the strong stable leaves and we go down and this is a scatter map so the uh, image of this piece is that is a curve here in the cylinder. So it's, if we, we have a tendency it, here, the image must be tangent to this curve. And uh, we, if, if we take a tangent vector in uh, here, its image must be tangent vector here, right? And it's one dimensional, so the tangent space is just a uh, real line. So we can 
define this ratio. It just measures like the, uh, the image of this piece. It is expanding or it's contracting in the y direction. If you recall the tendency is contracting if this ratio uh, is more than one and expanding is pretty small. And uh, with uh, all this definition, we can now fit our result precisely. We let gamma have uh, an orbit which is a uh, partial hyperbolic moving tangency and it's, it's at least cubic. And we show that in any small neighborhood of gamma, or with small gamma, big gamma, there, is a, uh, there exists a blender. And if the tendency is, is contracting, then the blender is not stable. And if the tendency is expanding, the uh, blender is not unstable. And activity by it means that, okay, uh, means, means this, it's, it's active. This blender is in a stable blender, says blender is activated by LSS. It means that this LSS contains a disk in the definition of the blender. Okay, so it implies that we have this non transversal detection with all, all this. And recall that's the dimension of the leaf is MS1 and dimension of invariant manifolds of lambda is N. So the intersection is non transverse, right? But we call the the definition blender is a bit robust, right? So, uh, so actually for, uh, we have this gamma, curve gamma, we take any small neighborhood, or, there is a small neighborhood of this gamma. Uh, for any point, uh, take any point in small neighborhood, it's, it's stable, uh, it's the small stable leaf through this point, must, it must activate blender, it must have this intersection, and the, the, stable, the small unstable leaf through this point must have this insect if, if the blender is CU. So uh, this is the main results that we can get blenders uh, without perturbation. And how we prove it, I'll uh, illustrate. So like I said, we consider, we can, we consider two maps. One local map, that's a, a restriction of the map to a small neighborhood of, of the curve gamma, game curve gamma. And we consider the transition map, T1. Uh, what it means? It means we take two points, M minus and M plus, from the from kinetic orbit. One is in the local NC manifold of gamma here, and one is in the local state manifold of gamma here. So we consider the, just uh, this just Fn, it's just Fn maps this point to its point. So we consider this maps from small neighborhood of its point to the small neighborhood of here, and uh, you see that. The, the intersection of the, uh, here, the, uh, you, if you see that the, the dimension is four now, the two dimensional S manifold of gamma, it intersects is pi zero, the two dimensional piece here. This image here, consider this image, the image with the three dimensional S manifold of the cylinder A, it's just a curve. And if we project down, it's just, it's, we can see the tendency here uh, in the artifact coordinate. And we studied the return map from here to here and here. So we, because uh, uh, the rotation number of gamma is irrational, right? So apparently, well, there are the, the case which goes back uh, infinitely many. So we can consider such, uh, such a map. And uh, what we do it, we do some renormalization. We have those coordinates capital coordinates here, uh, X, Y, not no important. X, it just means strong, stable. Y means strong, unstable. Okay. Uh, so basically, what we do, it's uh, basically like this. We, just, uh, we have some scaling coefficients delta, which go like this, and we consider K, and that, uh, the, the case such that it's not too large and also not too small, it's just like the auto, uh, order of the auto mass one. And we show that in this uh, skewed coordinates, the uh, central coordinates of this return map it looks like this it's triangular, so it's hyperbolic, apparently, if, if beta is not equal to one. This gives us uh, uh, the hyperbolicity, okay? And so, or the, oh, because and first place, the blender is the hyperbolic set, right? So we need to first 
prove, prove that prove, prove that it's a hyperbolic set. And next, we need to prove that it is blended. Here is a blended. So uh, we need from the, from definition blender, we we see that we need if we take a curve and we take this we consider is it's image or per image it must be a current disk. So it's, it implies some current thing to prove. So let's see what we do. Uh, we find a finite set of the values of K for KQ, and we find some skin, scaling uh, coefficient delta is like this. So we have K, and K uh, is more or less delta minus one. Okay, so this condition is satisfied. So what we can find, find the hyperbolic set. And then we show that this CK here is constant. For all, all such cases, this CK formula, some, some kind of sufficient dense grid along the fat coordinates. This is used for creating blender. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you what it means sufficient dense. Right, so so uh, this, if we have this property, then we consider the iterated function system So this map. Well, for all k from this k q, we, we can prove the so-called current property in the fat direction, which give us the blender. And here we just use this. The only thing we needed to use is this uh, very simple thing. We write on zero like this, and then we can prove. And the thing that we need is finite set, right? And also uh, we need uh, this condition. If we don't require this, then it's simple, right? Because the omega is irrational, we can get anything. But we need this key cannot be too large. So what do we do? We, do? we, we now, for example, we consider a case where the tendency is, is expanding. So uh, beta one is greater one. It means that it means that uh, in our direction we have contraction, and uh, in fat direction we have expansion. Okay. So we can now just take R and X together. They, they, are, they are contracting, and we take a box. Just a small neighborhood of the points and the tendency points and minus. And we consider the pre image, the pre image of this box by the return map PK for K from this set KQ. And uh, the picture shows the case where this set KQ just, contain, just contains two elements. So we have two pre images. But you see, because in R and X direction, it's, the map is uh, contracting. So the pre image. If you consider pre-image, uh, pre the universal map, it must be standing. So in R and X direction, we, we cover the full length. And for the fat direction, you can see from picture, it covers uh, the uni of the two pre-images covers the whole length of the uh, in phi. And uh, uh, if we see from, if, if, it, if we project along the RX direction with this picture, we take any curve L, which is tangent to the, uh, strong and stable core, it must intersect one of the pre-images, right? So it must contain a small piece uh, whose image is again uh, is against uh, some curve like this. Uh, yeah. Because uh, why it must be like that? Because first, the cone, cone field, the CU is strong and stable cone field is forward invariant. So it, this piece, it's, its image must still uh, be some curve inside tangent to this cone uh, like this, and then it must again uh, uh, intersect one of the two uh, images, which means that this curve contains a point uh, whose forward image stay in this box forever, which means that this point belongs to the uh, stable manifold of the uh, of, of lambda. And actually, you just consider uh, the map G here defined like this. Of uh, four points inside the inside the domain uh, of TK, we just apply TK. So for, for this map, uh, we find that the uh, locally maximum set of this map it it just a blender, and then it implies that it's a blender for the map I. So this is a uh, construction for the uh, contracting. Uh, Expanding uh, tangency. Okay, for the uh, contract, for a bit smaller than one, it's, it's, it's similar. Like right? just here, you don't consider pre image, you consider the, the image. Okay, this is the 
proof, proof for the theorem without perturbation. Now, to get uh, some that blenders, we, we need two perturbations. We have two parameters. One is just the mu, which is the uh, tendency. And that, the other one is beta, just the, where the tendency is contraction or uh, expansion. So we see that if, with, uh, if, if this condition is satisfied, it means, which basically means that we can use mu and beta as parameters for this family, okay? So it means that for any small parameter, uh, we, we, we can take epsilon every small, and we see we find that epsilon and any uh, any g from simple s below to this map, it they both they all have a simplex blender and activated by the strong stable leaf and strong unstable leaves. And uh, Uh, the proof, yeah. Yeah, not uh, normal hyperbolic. Uh, but you mean gamma, you mean this gamma. Small gamma, it's a, we call it a partial hyperbolic. So it is a partial hyperbolic. Uh, so I need to see here. If uh, F not, it has partial hyperbolic, uh, uh, one dimensional TM torus. And a quadratic tendency, we can get this symmetric word uh, for the result. Uh, sketch proof is, uh, I mentioned that uh, for theorem two, we do not need the KM condition, but for this, to create the some black blenders, we need the KM condition. So it's for the first step, where I just call it one to two lemma. You start from one quadratic tendency, you get two new quadratic tendency. Uh, only this step requires the KM condition. Which means that we have PM curves, uh, a counter set of PM curve nearby, near gamma. And then we just, uh, we're, you know, just create a cubic tendency from the two. And with theorem two, we, don't, we do not need to split tendency and we get a blender. And, uh, but it's a CU or CS blender, which we don't know. But we know that if we split the, the cubic tendency again, we can get a new cubic tendency. So, but uh, the blender lambda, it proceeds to call it. Uh, blender is C1 robust. It sits here. We just split the tendency and create a new tendency uh, with, with beta prime. And we just, the beta prime is different from beta. So we can get a blender with, let's see if this is CU gets that blender. If this is CS, we can see a blender. And then we show that the two blenders are homogeneity related. And we show that uh, the union of them is actually uh, look at the maximum size. Uh, this is. Uh, so the in proof just here is requires some effort to get to the new tendency. I don't think I have time for this. Uh, I just mentioned that. So what do we use here? What do we use that? Uh, because we have this uh, KM condition, we know that there is KM curves, a counter set of KM curves like this. And uh, what is important is that the KM curves, uh, each point, in each KM curve, down prime in this set, it is a sensitive point for this set. So means, which means that uh, uh, the KM curve, uh, the measure of KM curves near each KM curve is large. And also all KM curves survive, all the KM curves, this, this, all comes, this all, whole concept survive for any perturbation smaller than this size. The size depends on this state here. This is what we use and we use uh, some lambda lemma for TM curves, which means that you just need to consider the scatter map. If uh, the two KM curves, they have some intersection by the scatter map, this means that they have some intersection between their manifold. And I uh, don't have time to pull this, uh, just some pictures. And I want to mention the transverse intersection. For the transverse intersection, what do we do? We consider this set, the set gun prime. That's, it is means uh, for the unperturbed system, this gamma, the, the set gamma prime is just a gamma. Okay, so we have we consider Hamiltonian like this. This chi is the cutoff function. So it's Hamiltonian just it's not real net, it's just smooth. So uh, uh, on this set gamma prime, uh, the Hamiltonian system is like this, which means the time epsilon map is like this. So we compose it with our map. It then it looks like this. Uh, uh, on the set gamma prime, it looks like this, which means that the the gamma prime is still 
uh, is still an anchor of, of, of this position, but the rotation number of this gamma prime curve is changed. But KM, KM curve before gamma is KM curve, it persists with the same rotation number, which means that after, after we do perturbations, it goes out. Gamma goes out like this. This is, uh, is a new invariant curve, which can be filled with periodic, periodic orbits, right? And uh, before, before, because we assume this point of section, we have something like this. Uh, this means that uh, this is a pretty image of gamma with like this. And uh, uh, by best multiplication, by changing gamma, uh, epsilon, we can make this in second point, uh, periodic point with large periodic. Uh, uh, period is, is very large, so that uh, uh, some point in its orbit is close to the pre image of, uh, of gamma, like this. And then we change this again. Uh, uh, we, we change this point, eigenvalue this point, it becomes a solution. Uh, so we have uh, nearby, near this point, we have a lot of KM curves. Because uh, this intersection by the uh, lambda lemma, we know that the unstable manifold. Uh, of gamma, of gamma accumulated to those as manifold of, uh, of any any KM curve here, but here, so it goes here. So the unstable manifold of, of gamma it goes here. It's, it's it accumulates to any KM curves here, but this pre-image means stable manifold. So it's very close. We can make a tangency between the stable and the, and, and, uh, the unstable manifold gets a homogeneous tangency to gamma. This is how we do transverse case. Okay, I think it's all. Okay, thank you. Yes, no more comments. If not, I have a case. Do you start with with this central? Uh, you know, you have a central direction that is two-dimensional and you have the tangencies. Yeah. If you start with something that is of dimension four, do you expect to have uh, a chain of, you know, here you solve the problem with two different blenders of different indices, but may have you may expect to have a cascade of blenders or something like this, or this, this case may doesn't sense or? Do you, do you think that you can increase the dimension of the central? Okay. If there are no more questions, we thanks again. I guess that we had a break of 10 minutes, is that? 4 p.m. <laughs>